complicated I just uh, well, you're, you're by the way you're all being recorded right now on video which I'm doing yeah I'm recording it on video I just started just a moment ago so we're talking about this online this is what happens in real life here in India They told me the medicine doesn't work unless you smile very happily when you take it. It's offensive. <laughs> Hare Krishna dear devotees sorry for uh, going offline for a few minutes or just pretend that you're hearing somebody speaking from India i am decided to live record this also just in case uh, it drops again or in the likelihood it drops again I was just showing the devotees we have two special things that came to us today this is the Jagannath Charitamrita by Dibhikar Das it's a 500 year old book about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Jagannath, written by one of his Audi associates named Dibhakar Das. And this is the uh, Chaitanya Bhagavat written by another Odia devotee from the time of Mahaprabhu. Uh, his name was Ishwar Das. And it also speaks about many different pastimes of Mahaprabhu here in Orissa that very few people know about. So my apologies again for starting like this. We'll just say a few prayers and then we'll go ahead and begin. Narayanam namaskritam naram shaiva narotamam devim sadasvatim vyasam tato jayam udirayat vedi ramayane shaiva purane bharate tata adavande chamadye chahari sarvatrigiyate mukam karodi vachalam pangum langayate girim Yet kripa tamaham bande shri gurum dina taranam paramananda madhavam om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Good morning, dear devotees from Sri Jagannath Puri Dham. So we're continuing our, our uh, uh, topic of discussion, which is Median Kurukshetra, and this is a section we're calling Brahmaragit. It's the uh, from the forty seventh chapter of the tenth canto of the Bhagavatam, and we're still focusing on the fourth verse of that chapter, and. Uh, in which uh, the gopis, they say to Uddhava, Pitro Bhavan Priya Chikirsaya, that the real reason why Krishna sent, why Krishna sent you Uddhava to Vrindavan, it's not for us. Don't try to flatter us. Don't try to trick us. We know the real reason. It's because he sent you to give pleasure to his parents. And even then, uh, the actual reason is that he's afraid that people are going to criticize him. He, they don't know about us, so no one's going to criticize him for leaving us. 
But Krishna's afraid that some people may say, oh, you're not dharma, you're not dharmic, you left your parents. And so Krishna sends you to give some pleasure to his parents. Pitra bhavan priya chikirsaya. In his Artha Darshani commentary, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says a very startling thing. In the verse, he, he says it, uh, he, he comments, Mune krita sanyasa syapi dusjaja. That even Munis who take sannyas find it hard to give up the relationship with their father and mother. In other words, this Vishwanath is explaining, this is really what the gopis mean to say. Uh -huh. If anybody's watching this, do me a favor and uh, uh, make some comments so I know that it's actually working online, Facebook. Munikrita sannyasa syapi dustyaja that even munis who take sannyas find it hard to give up their relationship with their father and mother. But Krishna is very easily giving up his relationship with countless wives of others whom he enjoyed. Just see, they sarcastically, in a very harsh way, see, say, see the severity, the, the severity of Krishna's renunciation. So as we've been speaking the last few sessions, these words indirectly indicate to us a connection between this Brahma Ragit, which is considered by many Gaudiya Vaishnavas to be the most important section in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Most important chapter in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Well, come on, how can you say that? There are so many important chapters in Srimad Bhagavatam. The first chapter, the first canto is very important. The second chapter, I know many devotees have memorized the entire chapter. There's so many very important things. The 11th canto has so many important topics within it. And within the 10th canto, how can you say that, that, that the topics of Krishna's appearance or the topics of the Ras Lila, uh -huh, that this 47th chapter is more important than that? Why did they say that? Uh -huh. So we, uh, commenting on that, we turn to the Vrindavan Lilamrita by Nandiki Goswami. And... Uh, well, he gives some explanation about these verses, and we spoke about that in our last session. I won't go so much into this again. But that Krishna, the gopis are saying that Uddhava was sent by him because his parents are dying for him, they're crying, and Krishna's just casually staying there in Mattur and he's enjoying like anything while his parents die. The gopis are speaking according to their man, their loving sulkiness. Huh? And he says that the, the actually gopa jati pitta mataya nahi prayojan. He doesn't really need any parents who belong to the gopa class. Now he's hanging out with all these people who, who are chatriyas. He's become a, a prince. He's become a very important person. But buji pataila loka nindhara karna. The real reason, buji, we understand the real reason why he sent you Pataila, to, to give this pat, to speak this thing, loka nindara karna, that he's wo worried about loka ninda. He's worried about the criticism given by the common people. Jadi muni hoy chaga kori sangsai. Just as a muni hmm, gives up all uh, the sangsar, but still at the same time, bandusneya anubanda nadi charibari, he can't give up his love for his friends or his family members. So in the same way, Krishna is like that. Although he's so renounced, he's giving up all the ladies of Braj, he's giving up all of us, still he can't give up his parents. So nice is the renunciation of Krishna. And so in this connection, we spoke about how Krishna expressed to the gopis his feeling of being in debt to them. And he said, Napariyam niravadyasvam yujam svasadu kityam vibhudaya sapiva. And to repay that debt to the gopis, Krishna had to show, no, no, it's not true. I'm more attached to you than I am to my mother and father. And how can he prove that? He has to give up his mother and father to go to the gopis. And how does he do that? He comes as Nimai Pandit, the beloved son of Sachi. He's known as Sachi Nandan. And he gives up his mother, he gives up his wife, and he goes running. That running means the taking of sannyas, which means gopi bhav, which means radha bhav. 
He takes that sannyas to show that, no, my attachment for you is greater. Lochan Das Thakur in Chaitanya Mungo calls that sannyas his adbhuta vairagya, or astonishing renunciation. Why is it astonishing? It's an amazing thing when someone comes from a family where everybody loves him and he gives up that family. It's an amazing thing if someone has big social position like Nimai had and they give that up. It's an amazing thing if someone has all kinds of wealth and things and they give that up. That's amazing. But that's not what's amazing about the Vairagya of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What's amazing about the Vairagya of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is that it's in the mood of Srimati Radharani. So following along that line, in our previous sessions, we turn to the Chaitanya Charitamrita, the Anjulila chapter 14. Very important chapter. We're going to go back to a little later, I don't know, in this session or in the next where uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami describes Radhikara Bhavi Prabhu Sudha Abhiman, that Mahaprabhu, his Abhiman, his conception of himself, his attitude, was always Sudha in the mood of Radha. And he would even consider himself to be like Srimati Radharani. Some people are complaining. Oh. So, if anybody who's watching this, I'm really sorry, our internet connection just dropped again. We're recording this uh, on a computer and we're going to just upload it like that. So, I'm just excited to the Bodhi Yeah, thank you, Krishna Khan. Um, and then uh, in the 15th chapter of the Ancha Leela, Krishna Deskabraj Goswami goes on to describe, Say, do we jam prabhuri kori asvasana? that how did he manage to taste this mood of Radharani? There is two persons, Kori Asvasana, and those two persons, Asvasana, they pacified Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And who were they? Surup Gaya, Surup Dhamada Goswami, who Surup Gaya, he was singing, and Roy Kori Shloka Patan, Ramananda Roy, was speaking Krishna Kata. And we spoke about this elaborately, how these two principles are so important in Brajlila, amongst the gopis, these two things, they have kirtan and they also hear directly about Krishna. And these are, these are the essence of the Gambira Leela of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is the essence of the Gambira Bhajan Pranali given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And what were they singing? This is our topic today. It's really a shame we can't live stream this because it's really good stuff. Karna Amrita Vidyapadi Sri Gita Govinda Ihara Shloka Gite Prabhura Koraya Ananda. That Mahaprabhu in particular liked to hear Bhava Mangala Thakur's Krishna Karna Amrita uh -huh. and the poetry of Vidyapati and Gita Govinda by Jayadeva Goswami. Ihar Shloka Gite Prabhura Kore Ananda. Mahaprabhu, when he heard these things, Koreye Ananda, he became very, very ecstatic. So how many devotees read the Krishna Karna Amrita by Bhava Mangala Thakur? Not so many. How many devotees read the songs of Vidyapati? Very, very few. How many devotees read the Gita Govinda of Jayadeva Goswami? Well, we sing Namaste, not a Singhaya, and on the appearance day of, of Lord Ramachandra and other uh, avatars, we sing the Das Avatar Stotra, but we generally don't go into the Gita Govinda. But these are such important books. Why don't we go into these books? Hmm? In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami describes that the mood of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was exactly like the mood of Srimati Radharani when the Brahma Ragit was going on. And this is why many Gaudiya Vaishnavas consider that the Brahma Ragit, the 47th chapter of the 10th canto of the Bhagavatam, is the most important chapter of the entire Srimad Bhagavatam. More important than the five chapters of the Rasalila, more important than Krishna's appearance, more important than the first canto of the Bhagavatam. That this 47th chapter, why is this so important? Because this chapter indicates the emotions of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Mahaprabhu was exactly experiencing the same emotions that Radharani was experiencing during this Brahma Ragit. 
This Brahma Ragit is so very, very important for Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Why? Because if you don't understand the Brahma Ragit, you can't understand Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And without understanding Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you can't understand the Brahma Ragit. <laughs> it's circular. Mm -hmm. uh, we go to the doorway to understand Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In this case, it's through this Brahma Ragit. But then we have to go through that doorway and we take the blessings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and then we come back to the Brahma Ragit. It's circular. And therefore, in our presentation of it, we're presenting both sides. We're going through the Brahma Ragit to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and then we're coming back again to the Brahma Ragit. So, Mahaprabhu in the Gambira is perfectly tasting this ecstasy of Srimati Radharani. Why this particular ecstasy of the Brahma Gita? Why not the ecstasy expressed in, in the, in the uh, Gopi Gita or in other sections of the Bhagavatam? Because this particular ecstasy of Srimati Radharani, the Brahma Gita, is the height of her ecstasy. And just as uh, mountain climbers, they want to, to climb uh, a great mountain. They want to climb Everest or big, big mountain. They're not interested in climbing a small hill in your backyard. So similarly, when we speak about the mood of Shimati Radharani, we want to hear about the height of her ecstasy. That's the most important thing that we want to hear about. And so to taste that, those feelings of Shimati Radharani, the Srimati Radharani's two most intimate associates came, and we spoke about this elaborately in some of our previous sessions. I won't so much go there again, but Lalita and Vishaka came as Sripadamadar and Roy Ramananda. Now, what were they singing? Gita Govinda, Krishna Karnamrita, the songs of Vidyapati, the songs of Chandidas. Now, again, this is a very interesting thing. If we want to understand Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and we all want to, we're all Gaudiya Vaishnavas, then why, don't, why didn't we print these books? Why didn't we go out on the street and distribute the books of Chandidas and Vidyapati and Gita Govinda? It's so important because this is the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and we want people to understand his mood. We want people to get his mood. But we don't distribute them on the streets. Not only do we not distribute them on the streets, but we don't read them ourselves. And if you start reading the books like that, your guru may say, hey, what are you doing? You should read Bhagavad Gita first. You should read Srimad Bhagavatam first. Read Prabhupada's books first. Or maybe don't read these books at all. These are very... Why do we say that? If these indicate the mood of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What is the special quality of these particular books? These books speak about the mood of Srimati Radharani in a very, very intimate way. And there is some legal way to enter into these books, I'm happy to say. Sometimes devotees, they say, no, 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 don't read Gita Govinda. Don't read... Uh, uh, Krishna Das Kavi Raj Goswami's Govinda Lilamrita. But, excuse me, is it okay for me to read Chaitanya Charitamrita? Oh, yes, 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 you must read Chaitanya Charitamrita. Did, did you know that there's a whole lot of verses from Gita Govinda and Govinda Lilamrita in the Chaitanya Charitamrita? So this is our access to these literatures. And it's significant to note that in their service, their kirtan in the Gambira was their service for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In their service to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Srupa Dhamada and Roy Ramananda, Lalita and Vishaka, were speaking these literatures, singing these songs, not for themselves. This is a very esoteric, subtle point which we often speak about. I won't go further into that. But they weren't speaking it for themselves. We quote this verse from Chaitanya Charitamrita, Tate Krishna Bhajan Kode Guru Sevan, that what is our Krishna Bhajan? It's our Guru Seva. We're doing Krishna Bhajan as service to Guru Dev. And our service to Guru Dev is our Krishna Bhajan. You can't separate the two. We're not doing Krishna Bhajan because I'm such a Rasik person and I'm really relishing Govinda Lilamrita and this and that. That's illegal. But when we go to speak these things for the pleasure of Guru and Guranga, for the pleasure of the Vaishnavas, and Sukhdamada and Roy Ramananda are doing this kirtan not for their benefit, 
but for the pleasure of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That's very legal. And if we read Chaitanya Charitamrita as a service for Srila Prabhupada, how can I serve Srila Prabhupada unless I read his books? How can I serve Srila Prabhupada unless I deeply contemplate on his purpose and what he expressed in those books? It's a service. It's the most important service. We should read with that mood, not with the mood of, of accumulating information and knowledge by which we can impress other people and we can have a, a royal sex life. And we, can, we can get all kinds of followers and, and people. Mm -hmm. So today, I'd like to read something to you that's, generally speaking, illegal. And this is a wonderful song by Vidyapati. This is from his Bhangiya Padabali. Mm -hmm. And it's a song where he's speaking about the feelings of separation from Sri uh, uh, that Srimati Radharani is experiencing from Krishna. And this song perfectly explains to us the feelings that Radharani is having in, in, in this chapter, the 47th chapter of the Bhagavatam known as the Brahma Ragit. to Cupid, Madan. And she's saying mm, that why would you want to burn my body, mm, Cupid? Because you'd have no body. Because Cupid, he, he, he's known as that personality who has no body because his body was burned to ashes by Lord Shiva. When Cupid came singing a nice romantic song and bringing some nice fragrant breeze and some beautiful girls there and everything to try to agitate the mind of Mahayogi, huh? Mahadev Shivji. Lord Shiva didn't even notice him. And he kept, the girls were like doing their thing and, and ringing their bells and on their ankles and stuff. And finally, Lord Shiva kind of, what's going on? He, he opened his eyes and he wasn't very amused. And so then his third eye opened and he burned Cupid to ashes so that he could go back to doing his bhajan, his meditation. So here in this verse by Vidyapati, which is one of the songs that, that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was hearing from the mouth of Subdhamadhar, Radharani is speaking, Tatihun madanatanu dahasi hamari, why do you want to burn my body? You, ha you also don't have a body, O Cupid. You should understand Hama Naha Shankar, Hahu Baranari. Baranari is a very interesting word. She's saying Hama Naha Shankar, I'm not Lord Shiva. Don't worry about it. I'm not your enemy. I'm not Lord Shiva. Rather, I am a Baranari. What is a Baranari? It's a, a person who lives in the forest. Baranari is a girl who lives in the forest to meet with her beloved. So I'm just a very gentle girl. What are you trying to do to me? Hmm? And uh, Vijapati expresses the, the feelings of Srimati Radharani going on. Nahi jatta iha bheni bhibhanga malati Shimati Radharani says, this is my flowing hair. I'm a girl. I have this nice hair. I don't have dreadlocks. Mm -hmm. 
Nahi jatta. Jatta means dreadlocks. I don't, I'm not wearing dreadlocks. Bini bibanga. This is my nice flowing hair. Malati mala shiri naha ganga. This is not the ganga on my head. I'm not Lord Shiva. This is a malati mala. A nice garland of flowers on my head. Some people call it jasmine. Not a very pukka translation. Moti ma bada moli na indu bale noya na na sindura bindu. She said, "Look, Cupid, you got to get it right. It, it's it's not uh, the moon on my head. Huh? It's some pearl decoration huh, on my head. Huh? And don't think it, it's not." A, a, a third eye on my forehead, uh -huh. but it's my bindi, uh -huh. cinder bindu uh -huh. that they put there. Uh -huh. And she goes on to say, Kante Galana Migamada Sara. Naha fani raja ure mani hara. And she said, Here, around my neck, Kanti Garla Nahi, it's not poison around my neck, huh? but there's some musk on my throat here. Huh? And it's not a snake around my neck. Huh? Rather, it's a necklace huh, that I have on my breast. Nila Patambara Naha Bhagachala Kelika Kamala Iha Nahiya Kapala. Now we've come to a very important word, Kapala. She says that Nila Patambara Naha, I'm wearing this blue silk cloth. Naha Bhagachala, I'm not wearing a tiger's skin. Kailika Kamala Iha Nahaya Kapala. And this is a lotus in my hand, a lotus flower, Kailika. It's a Kailika Kamala. What is a Kailika Kamala? Kailika means it's a play lotus that I'm playing with. Kailika Kamala Iha Nahaya Kapala. It's not a skull. It's such a nice song. Now what is he singing something now about a skull in her hand? This has a very deep purport. And it has something to do with one of the biggest mysteries in Gaudiya Vaishnavism. Let's go on with the song. Vidya Pati Kahe Hena Suchanda Ange basama na malaya japanka. Ange basama na malaya japanka. Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Vidyapati, he says, Vidyapati Kaha, he says, Ehena Suchanda. This is all Suchanda. This is all very beautiful. You should understand Angi Basamanaha Malayaja Panka. This is not ashes on her limbs, but rather malayaja panka. What does the word panka mean? Panka means mud. Or panka means like uh, something slimy. Certain people like it. it in this case, it, malaya panka means sandalwood paste. Now, why does Srimati Radharani wear that sandalwood paste? Because that sandalwood paste is very cooling. And Srimati Radharani is suffering from Vipralamba Agni, or the fire of separation from Shama Sundar. So, 
Vijapati says that there's not ashes on her limbs, but there's this sandalwood paste. So all of this has a very, very deep purport, and it has very much to do with our discussion about this Brahma Ragit and with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in uh, the Gambira. And in our next session, I want to turn to what uh, a song from the 14th chapter of the Anchalila, which we were speaking from a little earlier, from texts 40 to 52, where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu speaks about the yogi of my mind. Now, why was Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu speaking in this way? We, we know Sri Chaitanya Mukho Girna Hare Krishna Tivanaka Majayanta Jagat Premi Vijayanta Tadavaya that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was like a golden volcano of divine love. As Srila Sridhar Maharaj, Prabhupada's godbrother, once said, that volcano is exploding. Sri Chaitanya Mukho Girna and this, it's coming through the mouth of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he's giving this Hare Krishna mantra. But what is the fuel that's energizing that volcano? The fuel is coming from Srupadamadar and Roy Ramananda. The fuel is coming from Vidyapati. And so, just as my Gurma sometimes says that our Gaudiya Kirtan or our Krishna Kata is like vomiting and what what uh, what do you vomit you vomit out whatever you've eaten so similarly Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in this 14th chapter of the Antilila this we speaks about the Kapalika Yogi the Yogi of my mind he's vomiting out what he's heard what he's eaten through the mouths of Sri Damodar and Roy Ramananda and so I want to stop there. I have to go in a few minutes. And uh, we're going to post this online later. And before we stop, though, I want to ask the devotees here. We have a big crowd here in the room right now. Any of the devotees here, if they have any reflections that you'd like to share, what you walked away with today what was your prize, aside from the nectar drink that we served out to everybody to begin with. Any, any other prize that you getting here today? Okay, we have with us Anapani Radha.